Απλά θα ήθελα να σας πω, πρωτού σας παρουσιάσω τον καλεσμένο μου, ότι επιστούν κάποιες σκηνές ιδιαίτερα σκληρές, ιδιαίτερα φρικτές θα έλεγα. Να ενοχλήσουν κάποιους από εσά αν έχετε αυτές τις αυαισθησίες, αν μαζί σας είναι κάποια παιδιά, ίσως να ήταν πιο φρόνιμο να μην δείτε και να μην δουν τα παιδιά αυτό το πρόγραμμα. Mr. Ambassador, first I would like to welcome you to this show. Um, I know that you're a very busy man and uh, I am grateful that you have found the time to be here with us today. Thank you, Stavros. It's a pleasure to participate in your prestige show. Thank you. In, uh, in my opening statement, I, I did mention that uh, while the rest of the world is celebrating the victory of the Allies over the, German, um, over the Germans and Nazism, that uh, your people, the Jewish community, does not share this enthusiasm and does not celebrate as much. Could you elaborate on that, please? Yes, of course. Uh, for us, for us, the Jewish people all over the world, the 50th anniversary, first and foremost, marked for us the horrible times, the horrible days that Jews, our brothers and sisters, six million, out of them one and a half million children were killed and murdered by the Nazi regime. For us, those days that at the Allies came to the gate of the camps, we remember those pictures, horrible pictures, of dead people piled together, of, people, of bones thrown all over, of, of people that they hardly could walk, of people that they lost the face of a human being. This is a horrific f picture which suddenly came to uh, to, uh, came, sorry. to your attention. Suddenly you came to our attention with the huge, we couldn't believe it. Maybe we don't, we didn't want to believe it, but it struck us. Let me ask you one question, Mr. Ambassador, on this issue. Um, do you feel that the world uh, knew about these atrocities while the war was going on? Or is this something that came to be or came to light after the war? Well, I'll tell you, it wasn't uh, hidden. It wasn't secret. It was in daylight. To exterminate six million people, you, can't de you, ca you hardly hide something like that. People knew about it. We were yelling, we were crying, we were asking for help. Calls from Jerusalem to leaders of all over the world, please do something, please stop it. What we received was words of sympathy, not an action. And the killing was going on and on and this machinery continue slaughtering more and more people. Why do you feel there's such, a, such a, an ill will, such a hatred uh, uh, from uh, certain, certain people towards the Jewish people? Throughout the ages we've seen this uh, phenomenon happening. Why do you feel you, you're under such an attack? I don't know. It might uh, have been a kind of a jealousy, but a specific about the Nazism, it was an ideology of the Ari, the Ari race, mm -hmm. which uh, the others as Jews and uh, uh, Jews and, ad, uh, and uh, others. Yeah, the, 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 of, of course they persecuted not only the Jews, they persecuted uh, the gypsies and the mentally retarded people and so on. But of course the Jewish community, uh, which was uh, and always is a very prosperous community in any society, uh, is uh, constantly under attack and of course this is uh, something that... Uh, yeah, that was part of this uh, propaganda to take uh, support of the people uh, to say, listen, here are people who are uh, using you, who are people who are uh, uh, rich, who are people who are uh, becoming rich because of your, uh, your uh, work and your uh, giving up to them. Yeah. And that way he received the sympathy of the majorities of the people. It was very easy to find this group and to twist up all facts and make them as a target to the mob which uh, you wanted his support. Do you feel, Mr. Ambassador, the fact that uh, uh, the world sometimes stands in apathy uh, insofar as uh, certain atrocities take place? And of course, uh, one cannot forget uh, the slaughter of one and a half million Armenians in Turkey in 1915. And other events, even today, we see Rwanda and we see things happening in Yugoslavia or ex-Yugoslavia. Do you think that the fact that the world uh, 
remains uh, apathetic towards these issues does encourage uh, people who have a tendency to, um, to use uh, violence and war and uh, uh, for their means, do you feel that, that because certain uh, things go unpunished, that this encourages things like uh, what happened in the World War II? That's our worry, actually. And this is what we are demanding, that people shouldn't stay apathetic to this sort of tragedies. If we won't learn our lessons, our future is not insured. This is something that, that we're demanding from every person. He should realize what happened. He should study and should check and should learn and should investigate. What's happened? Why does it take place? We as human beings, we are proud and we're speaking about human rights and uh, beautiful uh, ideologies and beautiful things, never again. It's not just to Do you say, believe this never again? Do you believe when the statesmen, the heads of state of, of the world stand up and make beautiful speeches and they say things I like that? I want to see dates. Words for us means nothing. It has happened before. Words of sympathy were thrown all over. But the fact is, the slaughter continues, and we lost six million of our brothers and sisters. It means that it's not enough with words of sympathy. One needs action. One needs action to take it seriously and to stop any signs of this sort of event. And when talking about science, if we are turning now into Europe, we see growth of neo-Nazi groups. Let's talk about that. Let's stop there for a second. And let's, uh, I, I would like your point of view, the point of view of a, of a Jewish person, of a Jewish statement, or a politician, about uh, the, uh, the growth, the rebirth, if you want, of, of neo-Nazism, of Nazism in Europe at the moment. It's terrifying me. It's terrifying me because of the fact... Do you see any similarities with the 1930s, uh, early the, 30s growth of Nazism in Germany? Do you very see much so. That's how it started. I saw the slogan, I saw a demonstration carrying the same symbol of the Nazis. How one can see it and remain cool to that and start speaking nicely about it and start speaking about democracy, which you have to give uh, every faction of uh, your community to uh, explain himself, you have to stop these sort of things. And if you won't stop it while it just started and it's small, it will grow and in no time you lose control and events, as did happen not long ago, can repeat themselves. Since you are a people that you do not uh, uh, in, in any way trust others to do your job, and you have proven this um, in, your, in, in, your, in your being, um, could you tell me what steps Israel is making so that this thing will never happen again? It's not a matter of trusting people or not. We learn our lesson. And our lesson taught us very clearly. We have to be responsible for our faith. We can't expect that someone else will do the work for us. So what are you doing, Mr. What Ambassador? we are doing, we did build a very strong country with strong nation. We educate our people to be together, to look after the faith of each other, to be responsible for each other, to contribute to the society in all fields in order to strengthen the society, to strengthen the country, to, put, uh, to make it a force that will forever and ever will be able to protect any Jew anywhere. And we did show it. And here I want just to remind you the case of Antebe. 20,000 kilometers from Israel. Jews and Israelis were kidnapped, were under threat. The Israeli army took the this risky initiative, went all over to Uganda, rescued these people, brought them back home. And this is just one sample which was widely uh, broadcast. Well, of course, and a film was made on that. A film, and, uh, and it was uh, very popular. I would like to ask, so actually, everybody, I would... everyone knows it. Yes. But this symbolized that from, uh, symbolized the decision. Never again, is this why in any way, we will do anything. I'll interrupt you on this, uh, on this point, Mr. Ambassador, to ask you this. Is this why Israel is so reluctant in accepting the pressure that is put upon it, uh, upon it at the moment uh, from uh, various pressure points and pressure groups, and uh, America especially, uh, to sign a treaty on disarmament, and especially on the nuclear armament? This is part of it, but not all. 
the main issue here that we are in a peace process and Israel already have given up a lot for this process. Lots of concession has been made in order to reach peace. But our peace is peace with security. We demand this security. How we can give up when around us every second day Iranian leaders declaring openly that they are building a power in order to attack Israel, to discriminate Israel. Uh, we can't uh, sit aside and uh, say, well, we open uh, everything that uh, will be for, pre for a check uh, by uh, uh, other government or by other committees. While in our region, there are countries like Iran, which I said it's concentrate, Iraq, which proved it not long ago, in a war we had nothing to do with that, and the only one who received missiles into their houses, it was us. Uh, and I, I was that, um, in that one of these houses, so I can tell you it's terribly frightening. I know it is. Uh, I've been in the Cyprus invasion anyway. We, we won't get into the personal sort of uh, reaction of people and how, what it means. Let's get more uh, to general points. I, I was going to ask you while you were talking that when I mentioned that, that there is pressure on Israel for nuclear disarmament, um, that uh, although Israel has never uh, accepted that uh, it has such an armory, uh, is what you're saying an indirect um, message that, uh, yes, you have such an armory in Israel? No, I didn't say that. I can you did not deny it. I can say about it that Israel won't be the first country in the Middle East to introduce it. Mm. Mr. Burris was uh, the receiver of a uh, Nobel Prize last year for peace, if I'm not mistaken. Yes? Yes, sure. And of course, he was one of the people that initiated uh, nuclear experiments in, in the 1950s. Don't you find this antithesis, this contradiction a bit uh, too far-fetched? How would you mention, how would you... No, well, Perez worked very hard and his initiative and with his vision to reach this stage of the peace process. He deserved uh, that uh, Peace Nobel Prize more than anyone else in the world. I may just have to mention here that also the prize was given at the same time to Prime Minister uh, Rabin and to Chairman Arafat. I mentioned at the beginning that we will sort of uh, focus on this issue, on the Holocaust, and of course, um, conversation will lead us from one point to the other, and unfortunately, yeah. or... Uh, about this, uh, more about the Holocaust, uh, I want to tell you that lately there have been many programs and new material which has discovered. Part of it, as uh, I uh, promised you, and we brought it over from Israel, Mm -hmm. specifically for your program Thank you very much. to be screened here in Cyprus also for the first time. With this new evidence, with these new horrific films, it's something that you never ever imagine human being can come to such a standard of distortion, of killing, of torching. Children, women, elderly, uh, just name it, pregnant women, just to take them out, to shoot them, to kill them, to uh, put them to earth. This Mr. Ambassador, why do you feel with so much evidence around, there are still people who doubt Holocaust? Those people who doubt Holocaust are, I don't know what's their uh, reason, and, uh, but definitely uh, do that from a reason which are not, uh, not logic, a kind of a distorted uh, ideology, or I don't know uh, what. These people I'll invite to Israel to walk any neighborhood they choose. Wherever they will turn, they'll find somebody that lost someone during the Holocaust. We have people who live with us still. Actually, for that purpose, we're bringing over here to Cyprus that not everybody knows the story of Holocaust. We bring in people who survived the camps. When will this happen? That will take place on the 23rd of May in Famagusta Gate. We'll bring them, they will speak Greek to you because they are from Salonika and Corfu. Their families, their brothers and their sisters, their neighbors, over 60,000 Jews of Greece were taken to Auschwitz. You know how many came back? Few, just few hundred. You know that out of 
community of 2,000 people in Corfu, 1,800 were taking, 20 people have come back. Thank for those priests and the generosity of uh, some uh, Greek uh, people in Corfu and Athens and the Aegean and somewhere, some other places, Salonika, that risk their life in order to save these people, mm -hmm. to save all these uh, I feel few. that there is uh, uh, obviously, uh, and one expects it, a great, uh, a great uh, feeling, a passion uh, inside you when you talk about this period of time. Uh, you feel disturbed, obviously, and one can expect this. Beyond the fact that you feel it's very important that you bring to the world uh, uh, everything you know about the Holocaust so that, obviously, these uh, atrocities do not happen again. There is also a parallel issue takes place, which is the persecution or um, the hunt of the Nazis, uh, even 50 years after the Holocaust. And you want to bring these people to justice. Could you please tell us a few more things about this? About after the war, after evidence of the war, we found that over 180,000 officers and people who were taking part personally in killing Jews were start were being uh, became free. Some of them uh, remain in Germany. Some of them in Austria. Many of them, who knew what they did and expect what they had to get the punishment for what they did, somehow ran out of their place and hide it in various countries around the world. Either it's South America, either it's uh, Europe, either it's Africa, America and uh, all over the world. How many of Russia. these people were brought to justice? Uh, I know, of course, about the uh, Nuremberg many. trial. Of course, there were the Nuremberg trial, which put up the story. There was also a very famous trial in Israel, the trial of Eichmann, mm -hmm. the one who was in charge for the final solution. This program, which was taking place in Vienna in June 42, which a very detailed program, which just to mention it, one became uh, crazy just to see how people sitting up in a room and deciding we're going to discriminate all the Jewish nation and program it like you're going to build an industry. Mm -hmm. We take trains from here to there, we take people, we'll put, chamber, we put them in the gas, we'll put them in the uh, train, we'll kill them here, we kill them there. A program like you're going really as uh, an industry of killing. Tell me, tell he me. was the in charge, mm -hmm. Eichmann, mm -hmm. and Eichmann is the one of them who hide him hide in uh, South America up to 60s, around the 60s. People like Simon Wiesenthal and the others who swear, who promised their friend when they saw them, when they saw how their eyes are closing. They promised them, we'll never forget you. We'll take the revenge. We'll bring these people to trial. Let me ask you about uh, uh, Wiesenthal, is the nice pronunciation, yes. Wiesenthal. Because I've read in a book called uh, The Odessa File, perhaps you've read it uh, by Frederick Forsyth. Of course, it's a novel, but it does mention, it was an exciting book, uh, and it does mention uh, uh, Rosenthal. And uh, he's uh, giving his whole life into chasing the Nazis around the world and bringing them to trial. Uh, of course, a question that comes to mind is, um, why do these Nazis with so much power and money in their hands, why haven't they uh, executed? Rosenthal. Well, Rosenthal became a personality that uh, you couldn't really uh, touch him. It was very clear. If you would touch him, this is a group of Nazis and uh, was obvious evidence. They hide it. They, so many of those Nazis were saying, you can't blame us, uh, Mr. Wiesenthal. We just uh, fulfill the uh, orders which we receive and they were uh, running and he had uh, to chase them. However, I can uh, tell you that, uh, like other countries, Israelis too, we make sure that Rosenthal won't be touched. Okay, we'll come back to this issue, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make a small break, and we're going to be together with you, Mr. Bresm. Uh, 
Καλησπέρα κύριε και κύριοι, σας καλωσορίζουμε και πάλι πίσω στο πρόγραμμα Persona που απόψε έχει την χαρά και την τιμή να φιλοξενήσει τον πρεσβευτή του Ισραήλ στην Κύπρο, κύριο Σεμέ Ζουρ. Σεμί Ζουρ. Μίστερ Εμβάστατο, hopefully I pronounce your name right this time. It's, this it's, time was yeah. perfect, <laughs> like an Israeli. <laughs> like an Israeli, okay. Let me come back uh, to, the, to what we were discussing just before the break. We were talking about uh, the feelings your feelings and the feelings of every Jewish person about uh, these atrocities. And of course, one can sympathize that there is such uh, a, a, a will, uh, the, the will and the, uh, and the necessity to, uh, to bring to the attention of the people uh, of the existence of these atrocities so that they will never happen again. But at the same time, I feel that there is a, a, a willingness of vengeance within you. Do you want to avenge the deaths of the six million Jewish people in the Holocaust? Do you feel that these Nazis must be brought to justice? They must be punished? Yes. Each and everyone who participated in this tragedy of our nation must be to be, it, we must and we should bring him to justice. Because otherwise, what will happen? If we'll just leave things like that, people will do it and uh, they will get away for, uh, with it. So you're not prepared to say, let bygones be bygones and forget things and start from the beginning? No, not at all. So why not are you doing from this? from our personal uh, point of view, and even for the world, the entire world. We must bring them that people, other people will see that you can't just act uh, viciously against the humanity and go away with it. But isn't and therefore, this I'm very happy that now in Yugoslavia, they're bringing some people to court. This is the way. Otherwise, uh, are we a civilian or are civilized, uh, civilized or uh, are we just uh, let things uh, go by like that? But isn't this the basis of uh, your new approach with the Arab nations um, in, in your attempt to bring peace to the Middle East now that uh, you're prepared to forget uh, the mistakes of the past and the uh, and, and the atrocities, if you like, or the uh, war crimes or um, uh, the violence of, of the past, you forget this and you start from the beginning from a new platform and you look ahead. Is this uh, not a contradiction? Star Wars, there's a big difference. The six million were killed not in a war. It was the time of World War II, but they did not kill the, in the war. They were killed by Nazis just because they've been Jews. Plan a machinery, planning an industry of killing, one by the other, just to kill any existence of Jewishness. This nobody can forget, and this shouldn't be forgotten. On the peace process, there is, this is completely different subject, and nobody can compare between these two. We are living in a free country, we are living with our neighbors around. We had long conflict with them, a bloody conflict, five wars, terrorist attacks, bloodshed, which brought nobody of us, no one of us, nowhere, just more suffering. We decided very wisely, very courageously, to come with peace terms with our neighbor to stop this uh, killing, to stop these atrocities, to build new uh, future, for the people who will come. Could, you, uh, could I ask you for the information of the people that are watching us? Uh, would you be kind enough to go back uh, and starting from 1948, tell us a few things about the birth of uh, the Israeli state. Uh, obviously, the, the problems that you had on the way, the 1967 Six-Day War, um, and how it came to be that now you're sitting with your ex-force and ex-enemies uh, on a round table and you're discussing, and obviously uh, this message that uh, peace can be fetched, it's uh, it, it has a direct relation to our problem in Cyprus and of course we're very interested and we're looking forward to uh, for you to find a solution a permanent solution because obviously we do feel that this will have a consequence on us could you please start starting from 1948 give us a, a summary if you like of the Israeli nation and what you've done in these years well uh, 48 of course uh, the main thing was that uh, we we declared the Israeli independence, which was recognized by United Nations. However, 
declaration of independence took place in the 15 of uh, 14 of May 1948. The same night, Arab, Arab, uh, sorry. The same night that we declare our independence, Arab soldiers from seven countries around us attacked Israel because they did not accept the resolution of United Nations. They say, we want to accept that the Israelis will live here in an independent state. And from that moment, a long war started, which continued later, later on in 56. There was a big war in 56, another big war in 67. Although in 67 we had huge victory, one of the greatest victory of uh, this era, still it was war that we lost many of our soldiers, many of our people. After that became, uh, there was another war in 73 that Israel were attacked in Yom Kippur. It's our holiest day while people were in synagogue. Uh, armies of Egypt and Syria attacked Israel and it was real danger for I think the first time from the day that Israel had its independence, there was the first time again a threat that they, for the existence of Israel. After, in between all this war, there was constant terrorist attacks. And the terrorist attacks were against civilians, against children, against women. I will interrupt you there, Mr. Ambassador, because we usually see this word, terrorist, used uh, very often. We saw it used uh, in the Vietnam War. We saw it used, uh, uh, we, we see it used now by Turkey insofar as the Kurds are concerned and so on. Uh, would it not be fair that people that are fighting for uh, what they believe is their freedom, uh, it's only fair to say that they're freedom fighters rather than use the word terrorists? You know, freedom fighters are people who are fight for freedom. But if you, and, uh, you put a bomb in a bus, and you kill 45 st children ages between 8 to 14, what's freedom here? I am what's not, uh, fighters in it? Yes. Is that a freedom fighter? I, I am not, uh, I am not uh, obviously uh, encouraging such uh, atrocities and these acts of terror or terrorism. But um, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, since 1967, you have been occupying uh, certain territories that are not yours, and you still are occupying or you're still under these territories under your control uh, so obviously uh, if there is a movement of people that want their land back um, uh, would it be not be fair to to use the term people that are fighting for the freedom of their country rather than of course if the word terrorism is used only for people that throw bombs in uh, churches and synagogues and buses um, of course one may be right in doing so but I'm, I'm generally using asking you whether um, uh, if you were to be more fair to these people that are fighting from their point of view to liberate their country it's it again depends if the, their ideology the ideology it's by itself are uh, putting them in this category of terrorists. When they say that they will take means and ways to kill Israelis in order to gain this land back, for instance, this is a pure terrorism. Because we, are, from the first moment this, day, this land came into our hand, we openly called Arab leaders to come forward and to discuss in peaceful means and peaceful ways how to solve this uh, problem? If uh, a group of Cypriot, Greek Cypriot people, Mr. Ambassador, were to take arms and try and free, and free northern Cyprus, which at the moment is under occupation by Turkey, would we call these people terrorists? No, I will ask, I will, uh, I'm sure that if something like that will happen, the Greek government will stop them immediately. Because this sort of action are, can't be taken by personalities just in a, he feels something and he takes gun and he starts shooting. Who will be, who will be shooting? Children in the northern part? I'm sure you don't mean that these guys will take such uh, no, no, I'm not saying and that And if this... they will go on the other side and they will kill children and women, I will call them terrorists. Although, although they're fighting to free their country fighting to free their country, this is not the way of fighting to free your country. 
This is not the way, by killing children and women... But you yourself, Mr. Ambassador, you said before that you, it's, it's an obligation of yours that you have to build a very strong machinery, uh, a, a very strong defense mechanism. So yes.